Hello and welcome to another VBA tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to cover how to control the VB editor, so the Visual Basic editor, using VBA. So a lot of people are usually surprised when I tell them this, but you can actually control the Visual Basic editor using VBA. And sometimes this does have advantages. Uh, you know, for example, maybe we wanted to programmatically add some code to our project. We could do that using this particular method. If we wanted to programmatically add references to object libraries uh, using VBA, we, would, we could do this. So this is gonna be a multi-part series and in this particular video, we're gonna kind of keep it more simple. We'll just kind of introduce the hierarchy that uh, is the VB editor. And then we're gonna just do some basic examples. So uh, in this particular one, we're just gonna write a single line of code to a new project. So with that being said, we're gonna jump to our Visual Basic. We're gonna go to our Developer tab. In the Visual Basics, <clears throat> And then from here, you would want to make sure that you insert a new module. And then also, you do actually have to enable an object library in order to do this. So if you go over here to Tools, down to References, you're going to see one right up here at the top that you know I've used before. So it's called Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications Extensibility 5.3. This is the object library that will <clears throat> allow us to go out and actually control the Visual Basic Editor, well, at least doing early binding. So if you go down to M for Microsoft and then Visual Basic, it'll be somewhere right around here. You just wanna make sure that you uh, check that box, it will enable it and you're good to go. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, we can create a new subroutine. We'll just call it uh, working with the VBA editor. <clears throat> it's probably a little long, but whatever. And then the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna declare our variables. Uh, the first one is gonna be the actual VB, ed VB editor itself. So we'll call this one VBA editor. And then this one will be a VB IDE dot VBE. So a visual basic editor object, so the Visual Basic Editor. And then from here, <clears throat> kind of how the hierarchy is gonna go is with inside of your Visual Basic Editor, there are projects, so that's kind of the next level down. If I wanna work with all of the projects, I'm working with the VB Projects Collection, and then if I'm working with a single project, it would just be a VB Project. Now, we're gonna work with both, so I'm gonna declare both variables, the first one, will be VB and then we'll call it, you know, projects just for short. And then from here, this would be again a VB IDE and then Visual Basic Projects. So this would be the projects collection. So all the projects currently in your Visual Basic Editor. And then if we go one level lower and we just remove that S, we are now working with a single project. So here I'm creating an object variable that will house a single project. And then inside of our projects, we have something called components. Your components can be worksheets, it could be user forms, class modules, all that kind of fun stuff. What we would want to do is we'd want to naturally go into one of those modules and then work with it. But before we could do that, we have to actually get a component. So the next level is going to be called VBCom. And this will be short for VB IDE and then Visual Basic Component. And as you could tell right there, there is a component object and then a components collection. So all of the components of our projects is the collection and then a single component is like, for example, a module. And then from here, uh, if I want, I can work with a single code module. And so we'll create our final variable called code mod. And then this will be a VB IDE and then it will be a code module. So this will be a single module that houses some code. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's create a reference to the editor itself, and then we'll do something simple. We'll simply just uh, you know print the version of our particular Visual Basic editor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a reference to the VBA editor, 
And so we're going to set the VBA editor object equal. We're going to go into our application object. And then there is a property called VBE that will return that object for us. And now that we have it, we can print it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call the debug print line. And then we're going to say VBA editor. And then I just want something simple. Give me my version. And so if I run this, bam, 7.01. That is the version of our Visual Basic Editor. <clears throat> okay. Now with this, what we can do is we can now loop through all of the projects that belong to our particular, uh, what is it, our particular Visual Basic Editor. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, I could create a reference uh, to the actual collection itself. And then what I can do is I can go in the VBA editor and then I would go to the Visual Basic Projects collection. So this is basically create a reference to the VB projects collection. Very important. And then if I wanted to, I can loop through each individual project that belongs to that collection. So really what we're going to do here is loop through each project in my projects collection. And so we'll say for each VB project in VB projects <clears throat> so the entire collection I'm going to go to the next one and then we'll just print some basic information so we'll say debug dot print and then it would be VB project and then it would be say I want the file name right so I'll get the file name uh, that's got to be a capital I'll copy this line put it down below <clears throat> And then I'll just take the name of the <clears throat> individual project. And so with this one, that's all we're going to be doing is we would just loop through each project in it. And so when I run this, you can obviously tell the first one here is the uh, project name or sorry, file name, the project name, uh, file name, project name, and so on. So, you know, as you can kind of tell, uh, we all have same, the same project name, so and it kind of makes sense if you look right up over here. Uh, so it's kind of hard to kind of distinguish these ones, but if we wanted to, we could use the file name as kind of a distinguishing mechanism for our particular project. But, um, you know, I'll do one more just for, you know, just to kind of see. And then we can say, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to return. I think for this one, it just returns uh, an enumeration. Uh, now, all of these ones should just be, uh, let me run it again. So it's 100. So I'm assuming that's just a normal Visual Basic project, but you could basically return the type of your Visual Basic project that you're working with um, if you wanted to. Um, it's kind of surprising because this one technically is like a different extension, but it's still giving me the same type. I would have thought personally, um, maybe they would have considered add-ins a little bit different than your personal Excel workbook or, or something along that nature. But, you know, again, it's kind of a learning experience at the end of the day. I'm sure eventually somebody will kind of come across and say, hey, this is actually, you know, has something useful associated with it. Okay, so that's looping through all of the projects. If we wanted to, now what we, we would probably want to go to the next level, which is a component. Uh, one of the components being, you know, right over here, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to comment this out because I, I really don't want it to run again. And then uh, same with this one. I just don't want it to print out again. And then if I wanted to, I could reference a single project. So I'll reference a single project. And so we're going to say set VB project equal Got to make sure that capital P is there. I keep missing it. I'm going to go in to the VB projects collection. There is a method called item. And the item one basically just says, hey, either pass through a key or a name, or sorry, not a key, a key or index. And then uh, really the index is just determined by the order in which they appear over here. So if I want the one that's called VBE book, uh, that would be the third one. And then this will create that single reference to that particular um, component. And so now that I have that particular component, 
I can reference um, the actual, well, sorry, once I have that individual project, now I can go and get the components. Sorry for being a little bit confused right there. Here, I'm getting a single project. Now I can go to the next level, which is get a single component. So here we're gonna say reference a single component of that project. And so we're gonna say, hey, set VB comp, so our component object right up here, equal to the VB project. We're gonna go into the visual basics components collection and then I again call the item method. And then in this example, I will say, hey, give me, give me the tutorial item, right? We'll just do work with that one initially. And then what I can do is just print out some information about it. So I can say, hey, debug print, and I'll say VB component, give me the code module. I don't know if that will actually work, but I'll try it. VB component, give me the name, and then I'll print just a couple more pieces of information so you're aware of it. And then we will say type. Again, it's just gonna give us a number back. Um, and then let's see if there's another one that's kind of useful. Uh, saved, saved, that's, that probably comes back with the Boolean if I had to guess. Okay, yeah, I think that's enough. Let's see what this kind of returns back to us. Okay, so code module, tutorial, name, tutorial, um, <clears throat> type is one. I'm assuming that's probably gonna mean code module or probably uh, one, because you can have code modules, user forums, class modules, and then the actual objects themselves. So this one I would imagine is just simply saying it's a code module. And then this one is returning a Boolean saying, hey, yes, it has been saved. So if it hadn't been saved, um, it would have came back false if I had to guess. Okay, so now that we've done that, <clears throat> let's actually go into the code itself. So I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna go to the next line. And so we'll set a reference to the code module. So this is the actual code that lives in that particular um, item. And so for example, I can go in there, I can call the code module property. So now I have the code. And then let's just do something you know, very simple, but we can say, hey, how many, uh, uh, how many lines of code are there, right? So if we wanted to, we can see how many uh, lines of code. Some of these give me some interesting answers to say the least. So for example, uh, what is it? <clears throat> Count of declaration lines. Now, the way I would read this, so if I go back here, I would consider this a declaration. You're declaring a variable. But if I remember correctly, this one doesn't actually print that much. I think it just says one. Yeah, there, see? It comes back zero. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research on this particular one. That to me is just surprising because, I mean, I would consider that a declaration. Uh, so I'm just surprised that it's saying there's zero because I've kind of seen a couple right off the get-go. Um, so maybe it's meaning something else. But the one that's kind of, I guess, interesting is, hey, you can actually say, hey, there's 89 lines of code in this particular module. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Now here comes the fun part. At least I think this is the fun part. So what if we wanted to add code to one of our modules? Well, we can actually do that from the VBA editor itself. Now, in this example, I'm gonna add code to a different module. So I'm, I'm gonna say, hey, add it to module one. So this one right here. So as you can tell right now, there is no code. If I go down, nothing, right? Well, let's add some code. So we'll say, add a new line of code. And so we're gonna okay, go in the code module, go into the insert lines method. You have to specify a line, that's a long. And so I'm gonna say, hey, here, just put it at line one. And then the string of code that you wanna insert. And I'll say, hey, insert hi there from VBA. Nothing happens but I ran it, there you go. So we now have inserted code programmatically using VBA. 
That might not seem like a big deal, but it actually will come in handy. Uh, the same idea will apply when we want to create references to different projects. So that's going to be something really interesting. I hope you guys are going to enjoy that video. Um, I'm kind of excited to do that one just because I think that makes a lot of people's lives easier when it comes to, you know, sharing their projects and making sure that people have references there always comes in handy. So that does it for today's video. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them down in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you. Uh, you know, hopefully can walk you through some of that stuff. Uh, but other than that, we will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, guys.